Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Kristen Bellstrom. I'm Fortune's Features Editor. And I am very pleased to be joined this evening by two people who I'm sure are very familiar um, to Stellar fans. Uh, Danelle Dixon, the CEO and Executive Director of the Stellar Development Foundation, and Jed McCallum, SDF's co-founder and chief architect. So normally is a time when I would say welcome to the two of you, but since you are the host tonight, I'll just say thank you so much for having me. Thank um, you for doing this with us. Thank you. Of course. Uh, so Jed, I'm, I'm gonna start with you. Um, you created Stellar in, I believe, 2014. And, uh, but it wasn't until last year that you brought Danelle in as CEO. So can you talk a little bit about why you decided that it would be a good time to bring a partner into the organization and you know, why you thought Danelle was the person to do it? Sure, yeah. Um, well, uh, I started looking for a, someone, I was acting as CEO and that's not my normal role. Uh, I'm, I'm usually more on the technical side and, and like to think about the, the product uh, more than like the management and all the things that being CEO entails. Um, and so I started the search, um, you know, gosh, like uh, it must have been like over two years ago now. And then, uh, you know, went through like, talked to many, many people before I, before I found Danelle. I was fortunate enough to find Danelle. Uh, and we really hit it off and, 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 um, and she decided to come. But I mean, I mean, the main reasons were just, uh, you know, the organization needed to grow. Uh, we needed to kind of take it to the next level from what it had been previously. And, and obviously Danelle would be an amazing person to do that and, and has been an amazing person to do that. So uh, we're just very fortunate to have her. So. Um, and Danelle, what about from your perspective? You know, you have been a Mozilla at the time. So, you know, there was some crossover, I guess, but you know, this is a new industry for you. Um, what was appealing to you about, about the job? Uh, there were so many things. Like, first of all, I really liked Jed and I met Jed and then I met other members that were on the board. And then I met some folks internally and I, I just liked everyone. And that's part of it for me is that I really have to like the people that I'm working with because we spend so much time together. So there was that, but also from my standpoint, there was so much that we did wrong, I thought on the content side of the web that or in the early days and that I was a part of, like, like I was a part of doing privacy and saying, regulators stay away, we got this. You don't need to come in and do this with us and then look where we are today. Um, and so many other things like that. And what I felt was that if we could look at this, like what at the time was relatively nascent technology, Jed and I started talking in 2018, um, and really thought about like how we could bring policy into it and really engage differently and sort of fix the things that uh, we didn't do right on the other the the other side of the web. Then I felt like we could just really like make this into something great. And I love the mission too. Like I think everything sort of lined up. So there was a lot that was the same, but also a lot of really interesting challenges, which just like spoke to that part of me that really wanted to do that. Um, and it's been about like a year and a half now. Is that right? Um, yeah. What, Danelle, for you, what's been the biggest surprise? The biggest surprise has been, especially in 2020, like how much, how quickly we've actually, like Jed and the team before laid such a phenomenal foundation, but it just, the, the marketplace wasn't ready for uh, blockchain. And we still needed to lay a lot more foundational uh, stakes in the ground this year. But I feel like everything kind of took off in middle of the year and the, the number of anchors that have come onto the platform, the number of connections that have been made, just to see blockchain and to see what's happening on Stellar, that there are real use cases where it's actually being utilized for the things we talked about for years. It's just been, a, I feel like, you know, I know it's been almost, you know, 18 months, almost two years since I've been doing this. But if you think about like the speed at which this year came together, or particularly during COVID, it's just been phenomenal. So it's been awesome. Um, so how do the two of you guys work together? What's your dynamic like? Do you make decisions together? Do you sort of split and own your own areas? Like what, what kind of pattern have you gotten into with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say at least for me, it's, it seems fairly coll collaborative. Um, I mean, we, we um, like bounce ideas off of each other and, and think through like the larger strategic issues pretty much together. Um, and, you know, I mean, we don't always exactly agree at first, but usually we talk it through and like come to a consensus and, and, and I think a better decision ultimately. Um, so for me, it's like a pretty fun relationship. Uh, you know, we both have different strengths and we both see things in different ways. And so it's, it's good to like talk to each other and like kind of, uh, you know, approach these problems together. So, yeah. 
And what yeah, about you, Jenna? It's the same. Like, you know, one of the things that Jed, when we were sort of talking about whether or not this would be the right fit, we had dinner together and we spent time just like getting to know one another. And I think that was a really important part of it so that we both knew what we were getting into. We talked about our styles and our work styles and how that would be. We talked about the things that, you know, were challenges for us in the past. And I don't think either one of us wanted to get into a situation with someone that we wouldn't like ultimately mesh with. And I think that when you're doing something like this and especially coming to an organization that is starting up and like really has its own culture and development, there's still more to grow from it. You really wanna make sure those things are right. So I think we did that. And I mean, I love it. I feel like Jed is super unique in terms of uh, uh, founders, like the way that people think about founders. I love, he's very supportive and that's not something that you always can get. And so, yeah, we don't always agree but we always get to the right decision. Um, so when you guys are looking back at the time that you, you have been working together so far, um, Jed, uh, for you, what do you think are like the biggest things that Stellar has accomplished in that time? Are there, you know, what, what are you most proud of from, from that last, that 18 months or so? Yeah. Um, I mean, we've done a lot. I, I think the biggest thing really is just growing the team. I mean, we're just in such a different place than when Denal started. I think we were maybe like 12 people at that point. Now mm. we're like close to 80. So, uh, you know, the organization itself is just in a, just a much different place and it can do more. And I think it's, people are starting to see that out in the world. Like we're, you know, we, we like Vibrant is in beta now. We're doing all these cool things in Nigeria. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff happening and, and we just have a lot of the, 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 like the framework in place, like even just this conference, like we could have never pulled this off before, uh, you know, two years ago. So like, th there's just a lot of things that we can do now and, and seeing that all come together has just been pretty awesome. Um, and, you know, I mean, I guess you have to talk about the flip side, right? If you're going to talk about the things you're the most excited about, um, for you, what are the things that are, I mean, is there something that stands out as far as like, you wish you'd gotten a little further in this time or like that has been the most challenging over the last, you know, 12, 18 months? Um, I, I mean, you know, uh, like you always wish that you have d had done more things and, or like were even better than they were, but there's nothing really in particular where I'm like, wow, that was a huge problem or mistake or anything like that um, that I can think of. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's been it's been kind of overwhelmingly positive over the last like you know 18 months or so. So yeah, I don't know. I don't mean to know. Maybe you have a, a, something that we missed. <laughs> no, I mean from my standpoint, like Jed and I have this very similar personality in that nothing gets done fast enough. So oh. we're both like push and we push and we push and we push which is I think great most of the time and sometimes maybe hard for the folks that we work with. But uh, I think that like, I can't look back, you know, of course, like I wish that we had 20 more anchors on the network. Like I just wish we did, but the teams have done like a phenomenal job bringing different parties to, the, to, to be able to learn about Stellar. And we've done a phenomenal job on documentation. Our ecosystem team has developed so much like collaboration and trust so that we've actually gotten to really push things out. So I feel like, you know, I, I always think that there's so much more that, that we could do. And yet at the same time, I am so proud of developing the team that we've put together. I mean, collectively, like truly, like for Jed and I, we've actually spent a lot of time collectively hiring the right people to bring the right people onto the team, spending time on almost every hire to make sure that, you know, this is going to be the right cultural fit and we're going to be able to grow together. And so I feel like, it's it's so funny because I know it's been 18 months and 18 months is a really long time on, on some level. Mm -hmm. And yet it just feels like it hasn't been that long because we've gotten like we've just we've gotten a lot done, but it's been fun. Like it's been a really great. I have never once looked back and thought, oh, wow, we should have done that differently. Or maybe this was actually not the move that I should have made. Like I love what we've done and it's just been so much fun. Um, you know, you're talking about hiring. Jed was talking about how many people you've brought on. You guys are obviously growing super, super fast. Um, what's that experience like? Like, is there anything you, you've learned from that hyper growth or um, any growing pains or, you know, how, how has that been for the team? Um, so well, from my standpoint, oh, no. go ahead. No, well, go. It's been a little strange during uh, COVID just because yeah. there, we've, we've hired a lot of people over this last, I guess, almost nine months now. and. Uh, you know, that a lot of people haven't met or they haven't met us, you know, and so that part's been a little weird. Um, so it feels like, uh, I mean, I can't wait for this to kind of be past us so we can all like get together in one place and just like everybody like meet each other and stuff. But 
but otherwise it seems like things are going kind of amazingly smooth. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. No. Um, yeah, no, what I was going to say was that we, um, the way that we, when we, when I first got here, we spent a lot of time. One of the things that I feel like is really important is the cultural and how, what you believe your cultural values are internally. And Jed and the team had already established like some of those laid out. And so we spent time literally like figuring out collectively as a group, what our values are. What is it that we want to see and how is it that we want to grow and who, who are the kinds of folks that we want to bring in? So every time we make a hire, we sort of make sure that we align with that and make, make our values clear to the new hires that come in. So I think that that's actually really helped us not to get to that place of, oh no, wait a minute, we grew too fast mm -hmm. because we have grown fast, but we've grown with very clear, like, you know, we knew we needed to hire people in business development and in marketing. And so, and, and in engineering, we knew we needed those hires, but we brought them in very methodically. So I think it was, it's been pretty awesome. Um, we're actually starting to get some really good questions coming in from the chat. So I'm going to go to those in a second, but, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, obviously this Jed just mentioned it, like you can't really talk about 2020 without talking about the pandemic. Um, it's changing the way everyone's working. It's changing literally every industry. Um, so I'm interested in, you know, how that's impacting stellar and like whether or not you feel like it has has affected the mission of the company and, and not just how you're working, but like the actual type of work that you're doing. Um, well, at least from my standpoint, I mean, it's it's been, I mean, we've always been a fairly remote team. I mean, we, we have offices in SF and New York and a lot of people scattered elsewhere around the world. So at least in terms of like our, our work output, it's, it hasn't been that impactful. Like people have, have you know, just, moved you know they're they're already used to collaborating remotely so that that hasn't been that much of a change as far as what we're doing i don't know i, I think it's it's pretty much uh that's also pretty much business as usual i mean all, all of our stuff is a little bit like longer looking than just the right now so uh there's probably like increased awareness of the need for cross-border payments but 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 uh, I, I don't know I don't and, and this, I mean maybe maybe, you know, maybe you have a different answer but but it seems like it has really actually impacted like our direction or like what we want to do. But. What no, do you think? I think yeah. it, no, I don't think it has impacted it. I do think though one of the things that we were concerned about right at the outset of COVID was how is this going to impact the, the the folks that are building on the network and we knew that there was going to be some constraints especially in funding for organizations and so we stayed really connected to the ecosystem and to all the different folks out there and it feels like we're in a really good spot now it feels like there was like a couple of months where you know some of the um some of the companies that are building on stellar were out there doing fundraising and fundraising kind of dried up for a little bit but now i feel like everything's getting back to, to where it was before and so we haven't you know i think other than really highlighting the need for this kind of thing i don't think our certainly our mission hasn't changed I think we've seen so much like really cool stuff pop up over the last six months, just in terms of, you know, the different players that have come and how those connections have made like real activity on the network. So I think you can't actually talk about 2020 without recognizing COVID. I think for internally, we've tried to really pay attention to make sure that people take time off mm -hmm. um, so that they actually get a break from this because it's so easy to sit in front of your computer all the time. So we've spent a lot of time making sure that we're helping people to manage that. Uh, but I think from our work standpoint, it's been business as usual for the most part. Yeah, I mean, one of the other sort of, you know, knock on effects of the pan pandemic is the way that it's impacted the global economy, right? Like it has changed um, so many aspects of the economy um, and created so much, you know, really uncertainty um, and, and been tough, as you say, on, on certain types of businesses, you know, I don't know, Jed, do you see any sort of opportunity for, for blockchain and in, in, in that level of disruption? Um, I mean, it, it's 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 along the same lines, but that's kind of what's always been there. I mean, just, uh, you know, our world is complete, uh, increasingly more and more interconnected, right? And so like just being able to move money across borders, whether it's for like COVID related issues or just like general like migration stuff or like, you know, uh, like just displacement. I mean, there's just all kinds of reasons that you need to send money uh, between countries now. And so it's just yet another, so. Okay, fair enough. Um, I, I I also just have one more sort of like news oriented question. This one is more um, the last few weeks. Uh, you know, obviously the other big news is that we've gone through in the US uh, presidential election. Um, and Danelle, I know you have been doing sort of some policy work and, and talking to Washington um, to some extent. So 
you know, I'm curious if you have any thoughts about how uh, like a Biden administration might impact Stellar, you know, the, the sort of crypto world more broadly. Yeah, I think is it. I mean, really, we have to look at the 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 three the two branches really are most important in terms of this. Like, if you think about the House and the Senate, we have mostly the same kind of structure for the House and the Senate. So we have it, we what we find is that while it's easy to sort of try to say that it's down partisan lines with respect to support of blockchain, it's kind of not. Like, you have a lot of people who are who focus on the consumer protection on the Democrat side. Then there's a lot of focus on decentralization as not being the way to go holistically. Uh, throughout Congress. And so we have a lot of work to do there, but I think we've, we've moved the ball forward. And I think that moving the ball forward in the prior administration or with the prior uh, policymakers out there, it's still gonna help us in the in the new one. And then with the Biden administration, the one thing I'll say is I think that, you know, we under Obama, there was a tech policy group that was really focused on the advent of new technologies that were out there. I spent a lot of time with them when I was at Mozilla. I think we'll see that again under the Biden administration. And I think that we are going to be able to try to like push blockchain as being something that's on that agenda. And I'm told, I've read that the Biden administration is going to be friendly to blockchain. So we'll see. Let's cross our fingers and hope that that's true. Yeah, well, that one's going to, it's going to be fascinating to watch that unfold. Um, I'm going to bring in a couple audience questions now. Uh, we have one from Eli Ramirez, and um, Eli's asking, what is the next milestone that you're looking forward to for Stellar? Do you want to take uh, that one, Jed? Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I think I, I'm really, I'm literally looking forward for Vibrant, uh, the, the consumer wallet in, in Argentina to be out of beta. That That's that kind of my, uh, you know, that, that's the thing that I'm most excited about right now. We released it. Uh, it's in it's in beta right now, so we're still starting to like refine certain parts of it before we really start marketing and widely in Argentina. So I'm just really looking forward to that time when when we can start doing that. I think that'll be like pretty huge for for uh, Stellar and, and Argentina and blockchain in general because it'll be like a really good demonstration of how this stuff is useful for real people. So cool. Um... Uh, there's another audience question that is asking, kind of touching on what you were you were talking about before, Danelle, which is, you know, what steps um, are you taking to teach sort of the general public, lawmakers, the average Joe, um, about blockchain um, and particularly SDF? Uh, and I know that idea of of it becoming more mainstream, you know, is is really important um, to, to to you guys. Yeah, so it's one of our pillars. We we talk about we want to be the blockchain people know and trust. Now, I have to say that when it comes to consumers and then developers and policymakers, those are three different audiences that you approach very differently. Fair From enough. a consumer standpoint, blockchain should just be something that is just an, like, it should be technology that they may or may not know that they're leveraging because the ease of use in the tool that they have that's using blockchain technology doesn't make them like have to be, have to understand that that's what they're doing. That's what we tried to do with Vibrant. That's what a lot of players out there are doing focus on the end user and make it simple for them. And if blockchain is can be leveraged and can be used to their advantage, let's use it and let's make it there, but don't make them like, don't make it cumbersome for them. Mm -hmm. From the developer standpoint, what we need to do is focus on that complete ease of use. We already have a lot of documentation this year. One of the things that I think we're gonna really focus on is creating more tools that are gonna make it easy to develop on Stellar, easier to develop on Stellar so you don't have to wait for and wade through the documentation. We're gonna try to focus on tooling. And then from a policymaker standpoint, we really do need to focus on the notion that decentralization is not bad. In fact, the reason why we're able to talk right now on this video is because we have that over the internet. And so we need to use that to be able to get policymakers to be comfortable with where we're at with respect to decentralization and blockchain and talk about the things that it's doing, which is pretty remarkable. Um, there's also a question here from uh, Brandon Garr um, and he's asking, why have you always believed in open source and why is that important? Maybe Jed, do you want to take that open source question? Oh, sure. Um, I mean, I've done plenty of projects that are not open source. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think for this one in particular and for, for most things in this space, like being open source is super important because again, like what we're trying to build is this, is this open infrastructure that we want other people to use and, and utilize out there and like take and, and run with. Right. And so, uh, it's just very important that we don't own it. Uh, it's very important that like really no one owns it, that where it's just this this public good essentially, right? And uh, and the only reason, the only way you can really trust this stuff is if if it is open source, so you can like audit the code and like make sure that we're not doing anything under the covers weird or anything like that. So uh, it's just it's just super critical with 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 this 
of what we're trying to do at Stellar for sure. So yeah, and if I could just jump in and say, Kristen, that for me, open source is sort of the foundation when you're using foundational tools and trying to really create a platform. And if you have this permissioned area, then you don't get the ability to audit the code. And that's when like the whole like trust, but verify method, like from the old security days can't come into play. Openness allows innovation and creates opportunity for a ton more creativity because you can build on and make better. So I think open source, particularly when we're using, when we're talking about a network is crucial, but I've just like become after being at Mozilla for seven years, such a big believer in open source technology and open source tool sets and what they can do. Um, uh, I have also, this one's an interesting one from Mariano Moore. Um, what do you think are the needs and the next steps for emerging countries regarding use cases? Um, I know you guys have talked a lot about um, emerging markets use cases over the last couple of days, but are there any um, that, that jump out to you as sort of like what what's next? Yeah, I mean, all, all of these, uh, I mean, it's it's always just really simple. I mean, the, the thing that Stellar needs is pretty like fundamental. We just need fiat on and off ramps in these different countries. So we essentially just need our concept of anchors. Uh, you know, like, you know, that, that's what we did in Argentina to enable things like Vibrant. Now other, other applications can, can leverage that anchor that's there now. It's the same thing in Nigeria. There's, there's a good anchor there. And so like eventually we'll be able to move Vibrant over to Nigeria very easily and other people can start using that anchor there. So like really enabling anything that wants to be built on top of Stellar, uh, it just requires that at the fundamental level, just this fiat on and off, which is an anchor. And once you have that, it unlocks lots and lots of potential. Hmm. So. Um, there's one more of these questions that's really jumping out at me um, since we were just talking about the election. Um, this one is asking, uh, with the scrutiny over transparency and the most recent US election, uh, do you think there's an opportunity for blockchain to enhance trust in elections? Good topical question. I've seen a lot of that actually. It was funny. I was just with Representative Davidson today and that question came up as well from, um, from the audience that I didn't have time to ask. I feel like the, that's a different tool set than what we're developing with Stellar, although Stellar could probably be used to be able to leverage that too. That's not our focal point. Payments is definitely the thing that we're focused on. But I, I don't know, like I wonder if that's like a technology, it, it can be used for sure. I mean, right, Jed? I mean, it can be used. It's just whether or not it makes the most sense to, to use that type of tool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I also want to ask you, Jed, you know, you have talked a lot in the past about sort of the frustration that you've had with with kind of crypto projects at large about not necessarily being able to like really it's cool technology you can use it to speculate it's like not really affecting people's lives and you know i know you guys have been, like we just talked about use cases and i know that's something you have been focused on but when you take a step back and and look at the industry like the the crypto world more broadly do you think there's there's interesting progress being made in that front? Um, yeah, I mean, there's certainly progress being made. Uh, it, it's, you know, you know, e e even things like, like Bitcoin is probably the most widely used one. And like, it, it doesn't need progress so much as just more like wide, widely known and widely recognized and widely accepted, right? So, um, but, but yeah, just in general, uh, projects are getting better and, and, and like higher caliber throughout the space. Uh, but that said, I mean, there's still just a ton of noise and a, a, a ton of things that, that don't make sense. Um, and, and I think it's just going to take time for that stuff to just shake out and people to kind of like gravitate towards the ones that actually have merit. Um, yeah, so it's just, been, it's just been, it's been a kind of a slow process for that to happen. Yeah. Um, Danelle, I wanted to ask you a question about um, your board of advisors. I, I know that, you know, that you guys have expanded the board. You've added some new folks uh, recently. And can you talk a little bit about, you know, why that's important? What what type of role um, the board is playing and and will play, you know, for you guys in the future? Yeah, I think it's uh, I, I love our board and to have the different backgrounds of everybody that we have on the board. And we brought Ronaldo and Lynn on recently. Ronaldo is is based in Brazil, has a lot of experience with the the early days of the internet, and also just more recently with content. And also he focuses on. Uh, blockchain as well. It's something that he knows really well, but actually having that different perspective in terms of a regional perspective has been amazing for us. And then Lynn actually has this perspective because she comes at it from a, a communications and a marketing background, but also just because she's been in business and finance before. And so just having those perspectives, the, the differing perspectives has been great. We still have Keith, who's 
been amazing. And of course, Jed is our chair. And just to have that kind of background uh, has been um, just something that's really phenomenal. And then Shivani is actually, she runs her own fintech company. And so having someone who's in it and knows what the day-to-day -day is like, it's good to have that background too. So I just feel like when you think about a board of advisors, and certainly from my standpoint, I had a really awesome board at Mozilla too, and I spent a lot of time with them just working through some really, like when we get to the really important questions and the challenging questions and the ones that we think we know the answers to, but it's awesome to have that background of other people who come from you know, different perspectives, it, it really helps a lot to be able to engage with them. So in as much as it is just really fun, uh, the board meetings are actually like, we, we engage on topics and we can get through some a, a lot of material. Uh, and I, I love having them as the advisors, but it's also just something that I think from a governance standpoint, and from a fiduciary standpoint, it's really good for us to be able to have people who are going to push back on us from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, in my work at Fortune, we obviously we write about blockchain, crypto, but we also write about other technologies. Um, and, you know, Jed, I, I just wanted to take the opportunity to ask you, like, outside of this world, um, is there any technology that is like really interesting to you right now or any corner of the tech world that, that you're keeping an eye on? Uh, sure. I mean, yeah, there's lots of interesting stuff going on. I mean, I've, I've been uh, spending some time thinking about like different AI projects lately. Um, there's obviously been a lot of progress in that, in that area. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, close with the open AI folks and, and with some other people in the AI safety world. Um, so yeah, that, that part's probably what I spend my time mostly other than Stellar on. So yeah. yeah. Um. Okay, we have a couple minutes left and I'm gonna um, just allow me to ask you one, uh, you know, fun question. Um, I, I love to ask people this one. Uh, I know a lot of, you know, the people who are listening right now know you guys pretty well and are really interested in you and probably know a lot about you. Um, but I would love to ask you both if there's one thing that people don't know about you. Like I often say like, you know, what's something I cannot find out about you by Googling? Um, and, and if you wouldn't mind, uh, however random it might be sharing it with us. It's gonna make it I'll start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start by telling, like this is a funny thing that when I was uh, a kid, I'm Portuguese. My, um, my family uh, has a lot of Portuguese background and I was a Portuguese princess in the parades, not like real, not like in Portugal, but in the parades that we had in my hometown and in like the um, Central Valley in California, I used to have to go and wear these like really like heavy robes of like beautifully ornate materials that they put together and walk and march in the parade when we were celebrating um, the Portuguese heritage. Okay, that is a great one. <laughs> All right. Can you top that, Jed? <laughs> Any princess uh, stories? Let's see. I don't know. I um, well, let's see. I guess uh, when I growing up, uh, well, as, a, as an early child, my mind was my mom was kind of a hippie, and so we actually in the first couple years of my life, we didn't have running water or electricity, and we lived out in the middle of the woods, uh, which was pretty intense. Now, now I realize how more intense it is after, after having kids. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of something people don't know about me. <laughs> okay, those are those are good ones. Um, all right, we have two minutes left, so I will take us back on track um, just to like let you guys close this out. This is a question that there's many different permutations of it in the chat, but people want to know, you know, what's the biggest thing we should be looking for for Stellar, like coming forward? What are you most excited about um, in the next couple of years? Go ahead, Doug. Oh, so I am just super excited about 2021 and I really want us to, once we get the tooling more in place and to make it really simple, I think that the permissionless network will light up because there'll be so many more entities out there that can come and build. And one of the things when you think about like when people always ask us, what is the next thing for Stellar? Uh, I always say it's the regional focus. If areas like we aren't the ones who create the use cases and who actually are you know, good enough to understand all the different areas and the needs that are out there. And so for us, if we just do this right and shepherd this code base really well and develop the tooling to make it easy to build on, the creativity comes from outside. And so I think we're gonna see some amazing, you know, just in today, I, yesterday I talked about Leaf Global. Leaf Global is focused on refugees. Like we wouldn't have thought about that here in Silicon Valley to focus on refugees. And so the fact that they're doing that and they're using our, like they trust our network to be able to do that is remarkable. I wanna see more and more com uh, companies spark up in the same way. Yeah. 
How yeah, for you? my, I mean, I kind of already touched on on my answer, but yeah, I'm just I'm just super excited to see vibrant become real. Uh, like I think, um, it it. it it really will. Um, it should, really should like spark the the network and like get get the foothold of like users that we need to like start these other other use cases like payments and all this kind of thing, um, and and growing to other regions and things like that. So I'm just pretty excited about about having people actually use the, use these systems that we spent so long building. Okay, that's a perfect way to end it. Um, I just want to thank both of you. It was really fun talking to you, and and thanks everyone for joining us at Meridian. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone.